What's up, Joel? Hi, DJ. Uh, yeah, what's going on, man? So I was thinking, I need a throwable weapon to really kind of round out where I'm affected. So I can be effective at range while also being quiet. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right, actually. So we can get something together, maybe with a uh, double tonto tip coming in to where it's balanced on both sides, the CG in the bottom 60%, more towards the top of that. Uh, get it to where it'll tumble end over end, so it'll definitely be symmetrical in weight distribution. And I can run FEAs now, so I can figure out what material we want to build it with, find points of stress, failure, whether it's going to be tensile, you know, things like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 cool, 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 cool. I definitely understand all of those things that you just said, but, uh... What's it gonna look like? I mean, it's probably just gonna, it's probably just gonna look something like this, you know? Uh, okay, so how about I let a bunch of people that don't understand any of that stuff you just said, which I totally do, and then whatever wacky crap they come up with, I pick my favorite and you make it real. How, how could that possibly be a good idea? All I'm hearing is yes. Now, this was the first challenge that we posed to the Discord. We were actually really excited about it and it came about pretty much like that conversation you saw in the prologue. It really was that uh, Modern Ninja and I couldn't come up with any designs that were particularly different from the status quo. And in the end, we ended with a design that was, you know, along the lines of, of what you're going to see for throwable weapons. However, it is distinctly different, and more than anything else, it is better at a design and more creative in a design than what we could come up with, which was the eventual goal of this uh, whole outfit. Now, the parameters for this particular competition was that it be less than 10 inches long in any direction and that it be throwable. Which, I'm kind of wishing I added more parameters because if I were one of you and I was only given that much restriction, I would have just drawn a rock and sent it in because that fits. However, rather than just drawing a rock or going with cop-out designs, 43 of you sent in designs before the deadline, which in a week in a Discord server with only 300 people in it is crazy, crazy amount of participation. We are so pleased with how many of you guys really came out and designed. Now, uh, amongst those designs, I've seen the unbridled strength of this community's creativity and uh, pretty sure I don't want to. <laughs> I've seen everything from a bladed guitar pick, I think, I don't know, pretty sure it was drawn with crown, to uh, about 45 different chakram disc designs on one sheet, uh, all the way up to just basic Bowie knives, weird stuff in the middle, and uh, one in particular, a folding comma with a 10 foot chain. Anyway. Without further ado, we're going to announce the winner, we're gonna show you the design, and then we're gonna go through on FreeCAD and we're gonna try as best as we can to make this design a reality. The winner of this challenge was SAF18 with this design right here. Now we chose this design because it fits the parameters, number one, but it also provides us a lot of different material and length in order to move mass along the blade or the grip and create counterbalances with that ring at the bottom to put that CG basically wherever we want. We can really, really control this moving forward, which is important because we wanna be able to both no spin throw and tumble throw this knife. There were other good designs, but this is the one the Modern Ninja went for and we're really happy for you. So SAF 15, by the time this video drops, you should achieve the rank of Ninjite automatically because you won this challenge, congratulations. So my plan for this next portion was to actually give you a walkthrough of how I designed and built the knife, but the issues with that came up with the fact that that video is 57 minutes long. So if you'd like to see that video in its entirety, I'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, just be sure to leave a comment or something that that's something you would like to see, and we'll be happy to make that happen. Uh, as far as the design of this weapon itself, we won't be releasing the design independently, but you are more than welcome to take this video down to 1 400 speed, and you can watch it step by 
step. All right, and we're back now with the knife fresh off of the printer. It looks absolutely incredible. And we're only on day seven. Day seven. Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, unrelated to the knife, I had a friend of mine get in a car accident. I'm a sap with technical skills. Ended up fixing the car for them and it got, well, it got consuming. Burnt! I swear, this car was on fire. Ugh! I'm using the hammer a lot for this project. I don't think that's right. Actually, I really am understanding my dad a little better through this. Like, for a socket wrench. He was never really mad at me. Ugh! He's mad at the stupid cars. Obviously, the solution is a bigger wrench. Anyway, here we are with the knife, and it's presenting a lot of the CG issues that I predicted with this very, very skinny tang. If you look at this here in a uh, just quick balance test, yeah, there we go. We are way, way up the line on this knife to get to the center of gravity. All right, compared to this knife, which is, again, this is a very similar design, but I just made the geometries a lot more simple, so that way the uh, center of balance would be a little bit easier to find. We see with this knife here that the center of gravity is much, much closer to the actual center of the knife. To test this even further, we went ahead and did a spin test. With this knife here, it looked like this. See how that tail end is being vaulted through the air, much like a trebuchet or a pendulum? That's because it's unbalanced and it's not centered, so it can't spin in a circle. This is accentuated even further when you see this knife spin tent. Watching them side by side, there's almost no comparison. It's obvious that our design of SAF-15's knife is, is pushing way too far forward and this needs to be corrected. So with that, to fix it, we're gonna head right back into FreeCAD. We're gonna get back into this design. We're going to widen our grip. We're gonna make this rear end circle thicker and larger. And we're gonna work it until we get at least with what we can tell with geometry, something a lot closer to a center of gravity in the middle. We're also going to go forward and we're going to paint these green accents going in here. We're going to fill our holes. We're going to have this knife all ready to go for the modern ninja who should be getting here in two days. So back to the redesign and it's the same story but a different verse. This time it actually took longer. It took 53 minutes to design this whole knife because we had to go down and by the time we realized what was wrong and what had to change it was just going to be easier to completely redesign it and that's often the case with FreeCAD is that it's easier to just tear it all down. This took 53 minutes to fully design but we redid how we did the blades and everything and so it was a whole lot different. After that we printed off the pins with tons of extras just because uh, PLA is notoriously fragile, especially in circular shapes, and then we painted them here in my garage with my uh, excellent safety equipment. Uh, after giving it two coats of paint and some clear coat to make it stick, we just put it into the knife and made sure they stayed in there by tapping them in with a hammer softly. Then to act as kind of like a, uh, a sealer over all of it, the whole thing, we painted it with some clear coat which we don't have footage of because I pointed it in the wrong direction and the clear coat went up and got on the camera lens. So instead what we have here is we have the knife drying, uh, after which it just came down to putting on our medical tape grip that we see in that design and then doing a cool product shoot to make it look like we're really selling this sort of thing. All right guys, so that about wraps it up for this first episode of Discord Design. I am absolutely thrilled with how it turned out. I think it's a perfect blend between what SAF 18 sent us and what's actually going to mathematically work best for a throwing knife. I love the green. I love the green accents. It's perfect. SAF 18, as outlined in the design parameters, this is your knife. We'll be getting in touch with you shortly to get some sort of address or something to send you this knife. We're very excited for you. For those of you wanting to participate in the next challenge, it starts the moment this video drops and here are the parameters. It has to be less than 250 millimeters in any direction, same as this challenge, and it has to be obviously inspired by Avatar The Last Airbender. It can be a weapon, it can be some sort of armor, it can be anything you want. Just design anything you want for the modern ninja based on Avatar The Last Airbender. Personally, I designed this cool little knife, kind of inspired by Sokka's club. It's got a blade on the inside and the top. It works as a chopper, as well as being the same size as a wrist. So it can catch here, it can catch on the uh, hamstring. It's really good, a little circular slicer thing. I don't know, it's just something I threw together. I had a lot of fun with it. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with your designs. 
So be sure to subscribe to this channel first because if you're not subscribed to this channel, you will not be able to send images in the Discord and therefore participate in the next Discord design challenge. All right, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel, get in the Discord. You have two weeks starting now. That's all I got. I'm Joel Messenger. This has been Discord Design, and I'll see you guys next time.